I recently paid off all my debt this year and I wanted to talk about it. Recently, I've been watching a lot of Dave Ramsey, which I'm sure a lot of you know of, and he kind of inspired me to pay off all my debt. Being debt free to me feels like an achievement, almost like you're in a video game and you level up. Being in my 20s, I find that being debt free is underrated. Society expects you to go into debt to go to school, get a car loan, get credit cards, and doesn't really teach you how to be debt free or doesn't really prioritize it in schooling. It's weird that it's the norm to kind of expect to take all on this debt and not think about the future and your life. You wanna be able to retire relatively comfortably and not have to worry about working and, and kind of enjoy your life. I was exactly like this. I had student debt, student loans, I had car loans. Fortunately, I was pretty good with my credit cards and paid them off every month, but I did have some debt. So let's talk about how I got debt free and hopefully this video can help you reduce your debt or become debt free as well with some of these steps. Okay, before we get started, let's talk about my debt. So personally, I had about $6,000 in student loans still left and I had a car loan uh, for my old car, which was a BMW. I paid off all my student loans in lump sum back in June and sold my BMW and actually bought a used Dodge car for cash. After I did that, I felt like a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders and I felt lighter weight. I felt good about myself, like I unlocked you know, a new level, like I said, about video games, and I just felt so much better. And honestly, it was thanks to Dave Ramsey, he kind of inspired me. I was binge watching a lot of his YouTube videos uh, about being debt free and steps that you can do that and different tips and tricks. So definitely shout out to him for getting me on this journey, but it feels good. And now I can just focus on building my business, increasing my cash flow, increasing my savings and obviously investing. Now, if this is your first time to the channel, hi, my name is Jacob. I build automated trading systems that make buy and sell signals on financial markets like futures markets and stock markets. I also build and develop custom trading solutions for other clients, sort of like a software agency, and I run that as well. First, let's talk about the biggest step when it comes to paying off debt and becoming debt free. And personally, I think it's increasing cash flow. Saving helps, right? But you can't save yourself to riches and it moves the needle just a little bit. It's more important to make more money first. That's gonna allow you to have more cash to pay off your debt, honestly, and will actually move the needle for you. This year, I've made quite a bit more than last year and that influx of cash has helped me pay off my debt. Technically, I could have paid off my debt last year, but I wasn't in the mindset back then and just wasn't thinking about it. Now, with me running my own business, where not only am I trading, I have YouTube and I'm building custom solutions, software solutions in the trading industry, I've been able to actually control my cash flow, right? I can make more money with my business relatively you know, I wouldn't say easily, but I can make decisions in my business to help me get there. And that's what I did this year. If I get more clients, more contracts, more YouTube videos, better trading systems, you know, I get more money. And with that more money, I can pay off my debt. So I made the goal of increasing my cash flow this year and it worked out. Now, if you're watching this and you don't own a business, maybe you have a nine to five job, I get it. It's tough when you have a salary to increase your cash flow. The fastest way to increase your salary is to look for another job. It's much easier to get a pay raise from another job than it is to get a raise at your current job. With that being said, if you're doing great work and you've been there for multiple years, asking for a raise does not hurt at all and you might get it, right? If you're doing well, the company's doing well, they'll probably give you a raise, but it is easier to look for a job elsewhere and get a pay bump. Now, of course, if you've only been working at a company for say three to six months, it's probably not a good idea to just leave. Um, I would recommend staying at the company for a year to two years before looking elsewhere, just so you get more experience under your belt and you kind of don't really burn bridges. Lastly, you could get a second job if you have the time to do it or look at, you know, starting your own business or doing a side hustle, such as, you know, freelancing, software development, e-commerce, automated trading, which is what I do. Those are all great ways of increasing your cash flow. So after improving your cash flow, the next step is savings. And this step is really simple, right? Like I said, savings will help a little bit, but it doesn't move the needle that much. And once again, you can't save yourself to riches, but it will help in the short term in terms of paying off your debt. So when it came to me paying off my debt this year, I made some sacrifices. Number one, I didn't go on vacation. That's usually the biggest expense when it comes to you know yearly expenses. You go on that vacation and you're dropping you know two to three thousand um, dollars. I did not go on vacation this year, and I just got groceries more. I ate out less. I mean, I'd still go out with friends once in a while, but I just you know would not do it during the week and would get groceries. Right? You'll save a lot more money 
buying your own food from the grocery store than you will going out to eat, uh, you know, restaurants and not even fancy restaurants. You know, if you go to McDonald's or Burger King, it's still pretty pricey for a lunch. You're paying anywhere from 10 to $15 for a lunch or dinner. So other than vacations, I made a couple changes in my business to reduce my expenses. I just canceled some unused office subscriptions and website domains, although I didn't really save that much. It was might, might've been a couple hundred dollars, but it did help. And I ate out less, you know, I would get groceries more often and usually would go on, only go out Friday or Saturday nights and the rest of the week I would have groceries. So those kind of simple steps did help. But like I said, improving cash flow is number one. Saving does help a little bit, but it's not that much. But anyway, saving should be relatively simple, right? Look at your bank statements, look at expenses, total them up for the month and you'll actually realize like you're spending a lot more than you should be. I think the biggest thing is usually food but it could be subscriptions. Um, for me, the biggest savings was probably not going on vacation. But then again, you know, that might, that might not be the case for everybody. And you can definitely go on vacation for relatively cheap. So anyways, that is the next step is, you know, kind of starting a savings plan and reducing some of your expenses that are unnecessary. The last step to becoming debt free is, you know, setting a goal without goals, you're kind of blind, right? You need to set goals so you can kind of motivate yourself to achieve them. So what I did at the start of the year, when I started watching Dave Ramsey content, I was like, you know, I want to be debt free, you know, by this year, ideally. And I set a goal of June because it was halfway through the year. And I didn't want to say, oh, okay, December at the end of the year, I want it to be earlier than that. So I set a goal by June. Um, I looked at how much, you know, I owed in debt, my student loans, my car debt and stuff like that. The car was easy because I knew I could just sell it. And I actually did make a little bit of money selling the car because of this crazy car market. Um, I know that was pretty easy, but my student loan debt, I mean, I could have paid it off in January. I did have the funds to do that, but I wanted to have a bigger buffer just because, I don't know, in, in my head, I just wanted a bigger savings uh, before paying off that 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 student. Then I made all the necessary steps to change that. Obviously, with my business, I'm always trying to increase my cash flow no matter what, even if I have debt or not. But I knew that I had to make more money. Um, I knew I had to save a little bit more. And I made like simple steps to kind of get there. And by June, I was debt free, which felt awesome. Now, before I end this video, I do want to say that not all debt is bad. If you have any personal loans or credit cards or car loans, usually that's bad debt because you're paying usually high interest rates and you're not getting a return or you have a depreciating asset, right? Why would you get a car loan from the bank on a depreciating asset, right? Cars go down in value. Plus the banks can be charging you interest right now. It could be anywhere from five to 7% with current interest rates. Why would you do that, right? It's probably smarter to buy it cash. Now, if you're using a line of credit for a business, a mortgage for a house or a rental property, I see those as good debts, right? You can potentially make a positive return from that debt. And in that case, it's worth it. It's good to use it as long as you know what you're doing, of course. If you get a line of credit for your business and your business doesn't do well, well, yeah, then it's bad debt because you didn't make a good decision and you've lost money without paying it back. So it's important that if you're gonna go into debt, make sure it's gonna make you a positive return. Technically, I use a little bit of debt in some of my trading systems. Personally, I trade mostly futures, but I'm recently getting into stocks and using a little bit of margin from my brokerage to trade more than what I have. And when I'm in that trade, technically I'm in debt because the exchange, the brokerage has offered me more shares or more capital than I have, and I have to pay them back. But overall, if my trading systems are good, they can make me more money. And when I sell my position, you know, I pay off the debt essentially for that brokerage and I can make a little bit more money. So that's how you can use debt to make more money, but you have to be careful on how you use it and be very confident that you know what you're doing. I want all of you that are watching this video to become debt free and start stacking cash in your bank account. I hope this video helped you and puts you in the right direction to become debt free. Anyways, we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one, guys.